Hi there, I'm Oliver Phelps, who played George Weasley in the Harry Potter films. And I'm James Phelps, and I played Fred Weasley in the Harry Potter films. And we've had some great fun today learning all about coding with Harry Potter Canoe Coding Kit. So the first thing we did today was we opened the box, and essentially the first thing we saw was the case for the wand, the PCB, which is the brain, as we then went on to call it, which controls the wand. And just looking at that to start with, that was quite scary because you see all these different computer components. I was a bit nervous that I was even going to be able to get that correctly done. But Well, I've seen your flat packs there. Well, there you go. So this is actually pretty very self-explanatory on what things do. So when we put the PCB in and at the start of it, it taught us what chips do what. So what controls it moving that way, what controls it moving up, down, the speed, everything. So within a matter of seconds, we learn what goes into making Git and what translates to on screen. Just going on the design of the wand, that it is actually looking like a Harry Potter wand. It's not just a stick. The guys have obviously really thought about this. It's quite edgy. It's got a cool little pattern on it. And compared to our, our wands, Fred and George's wands in the films, which coincidentally are right here, <laughs> they you can see the difference in it as well, but in terms of length and everything, they're pretty much bang on. And for me, uh, when it came to our avatar, personally, if I had to put one accessory with him, uh, it would have to be the Marauder's map, simply because that meant quite a lot to Fred and George in the movies. The scene when we Fred and George gives Harry the map, that was one of my favourite and most memorable scenes we did of the whole series. For me, my favourite location that we've seen in the kit would have to be right here, my favourite place, the Quidditch pitch, because when we were filming, Quidditch was a fun part to do because we, there weren't many characters that got to do it. Yes. And it... also, that was where we did our first coding experience today. Yeah, but I'm going to have to disagree with you, though. Go on. For the pure reason. Weasley's wizard Wheezes. For the main reason that it's our shop, well, Fred and George's shop, Look on my face. Well, I know that I know that everyone's entitled to an opinion, but you're wrong. One of my favourite things that I used to do when we were filming was, if I had spare time, I'd go into the art department and I'd look at all the different concepts of things that were going to be made into the film. So what I've really enjoyed today is actually seeing the artwork that's got into the Cano kit and just some of the things that we've seen for years, such as the Hungarian horntail egg. But I like how they've made it all quirky and just a unique twist on all these favourite items, and you can still tell exactly what they are. It's amazing the detail that's gone in, into making it look so authentic, but at the same time keeping it with a very much a cano twist. Out of everything we've done today, for me, my favourite part was learning how to change the tempo and the pace of music by lifting the wand up and down. I think that just shows how in detail you can go with coding. And I think it just shows how far we've come with learning so much on this, uh, on this adventure today in such a short space of time. My understanding for coding is more than it ever has been in over, what, two years they tried to teach us at school about it. This is a perfect way to start. Yeah, and for me, uh, my favourite thing is that I have actually learned something about coding. And it wasn't even like we were given a book and said, read this. You know, it's, it's very self-explanatory. I, I kind of even realised that I was learning after I'd, it all sunk into my brain. So for me, I'm, the one thing I'm really excited about is that I was able to do some proper coding using a separate bit of kit, which... You know, you wave the wand to the left, like Oliver was saying, and everything falls down, move it up, and the music stops. And that was all changed by us literally just selecting the different buttons. So uh, for me, that was one of the most exciting things we've done today. One of the great things that we've learned today really is just how much coding is going to be important to younger generations in general, because everyone picks things up very quickly from a young age. And I don't know about you, but I always used to think that coding was, like I say, someone just sitting on a computer typing lots of words. But now you can actually see where these things come from, when they go in order, what they can create. And I think that that will make things a lot easier in the future for kids who are, I don't know, six or seven. Yeah, and also if you think the importance of coding in the future is going to be because smartphones, pretty much written by, well, they are written all by coding, the internet, anything on a computer, and the amount of stuff what is just used in technology is all going to be coded in one way or another. So to be able to get a grasp of this at an early age, what a, what a step up and a, an advantage that that will be. 
The guys at Cano who've just shown us some great surprises coming up, and well, apparently we can't show you, but oh, we can show them. Yeah, what, we will. Here what we are go. they going to do? Well, they can always sort it out after, right? So we have got with us now on their <laughs> with some <laughs> over there. I think that's going to be some great <laughs> going on with that, with the one movements and everything else. And you can just see <laughs> right now going all over it, over the. <laughs> and the different areas around there in this coding creating extravaganza.